Hello everyone, in this video I'm gonna be talking about my Garchomp build. Garchomp just got a recent buff to help it compete with the other all-rounders and it's now a worthwhile pick to be played in ranking. Garchomp's specialty is to do immense amount of damage, pretty much beating every Pokemon if left untouched. Its biggest weakness is crowd control because Garchomp doesn't have any defensive ability to protect itself, so as long as you're able to use your basic attack, you will melt the enemy's HP bar. If you enjoy an all-in playstyle to do immense damage, then Garchomp is the perfect Pokemon for you. So without further ado, let's get started with the build. First off, we have Dragon Rush. This ability is unlocked at level 6 and is your primary engage tool. This move makes Garchomp dash in a designated direction, shoving all opposing Pokemon's hit. Dragon Rush has a relatively short cooldown at only 6 seconds, so it helps to stick onto the enemy and continue to dish out basic attack damage. Since it's a free dash, you can also use Dragon Rush to escape instead. This ability can be upgraded at level 11 to decrease the movement speed of enemies hit to further help Garchomp stick onto the enemy. Next, we have Earthquake. This ability is unlocked at level 8 and it's great to deal AoE damage to help with getting 5 stacks for your basic attack very quickly. This move makes Garchomp jump and crash down at the location to deal heavy AoE damage so it's difficult for the enemy to dodge. Earthquake offers consistent damage and it's a great follow up ability after using Dragon Rush to instantly deal damage to all enemies. This ability can be upgraded at level 14 to decrease the movement speed of enemies hit. Some players like to run Dragon Claw but I find that ability a bit hard to use because it pushes the enemy away from you and your teammates so it can be a detriment if used incorrectly. Overall Earthquake's burst damage is great in team fights and extremely easy to use. Moving on we have the health items. First it's the offensive item Muscle Band. This item offers attack and attack speed as the base stat which is excellent for Garchomp because most of its damage comes from basic attack. Furthermore, Muscle Band's passive deals 3% of the opposing Pokemon's HP as bonus damage, so it helps immensely while farming and doing objectives. Garchomp's basic attack with 5 stacks is extremely quick so you can kill Dreadnought and Zapdos very quickly, and no tanks in the game can survive against Garchomp for long. Secondly, we have our first defensive item, Buddy Barrier. This item offers HP as the base stat to help Gibble survive in the early game where it struggles the most, Additionally, the passive 40% max HP shield when using your Night Move is massive to allow for Garchomp to shred through the enemy team without worrying about dying. Overall, the Buddy Barrier just offers immense survivability and there really isn't any reason not to use it. Finally, we have the Focus Band. This item offers defense and special defense to further help Gibble survive the early game. Furthermore, the passive healing from this item is excellent for skirmishes and scales extremely well with Garchomp's high HP and Buddy Barrier. Overall, Garchomp has insane amount of damage, so look to build for survivability so you can continue to dish out damage in team fights. Alright, now it's the battle item. There are two options that are great for Garchomp. First is the full heal. This item is very good to solve one of Garchomp's biggest weakness, crowd control. With the full heal, you don't have to worry about Pokemons like Wigglytuff and Ninetales and just relentlessly do damage. Do note that if the enemy team doesn't have any crowd control at all, then this item loses its value. The second item that's great for Garchomp is the eject button. This item offers more survivability for Gibble in the early game because you do not have any free dash for escape. Once you learn Dragon Rush however, the eject button isn't used as much anymore. Overall, it's a great panic button to keep in case you need a quick escape. Now I'll be showing you my Garchomp gameplay in the central lane, let's get started. Alright, so the beginning of the game is pretty simple, just get your sand attack and walk down to the puppy so you can do it. Do remember that the if you're in the sandy area, the puppy runs down, and if you're in the grassy area, the puppy runs up. So try to go to in the direction to match it so you can continuously stick on it for your auto attack. Once you get 5 stack on your boosted attack, then essentially your attack speed will go up and you will end up doing a lot more damage to the buffs, and Gibble can clear the buffs extremely quickly. Just pop your sand attack for the basic attack increase and pretty much just continues to clear for level 5 and look for a gank top.
after you clear the next crab, you should be able to get level 5. Do note that you're not level 6 yet, so you do not have access to Dragon Rush, so the gank is pretty much to fight for the bees unless the enemy plays really aggressive, otherwise it's really difficult to punish on Gibble's first gank. Here you see, I take the jump pad over the wall, and now that I see the enemy is extremely aggressive, so I walk up and do some damage. Unfortunately, the enemy Gibble is also here, so we pretty much have to back off just a little bit, but my Mr. Mime got a really nice uh, combo, so that pretty much sets up the kill. And now we can contest the bees, no problem. Your goal here is to just get as many bees as possible, and pretty much look to get level 6 so you can have access to Dragon Dive. Here I was gonna back, but I see that the enemy Crusto is playing extremely aggressive, so I stayed around to see if I can punish. My Mr. Mime actually took the initiative to walk up and did another very nice combo, and I was able to clear the monkey, and pretty much get level 6, and get access to Dragon Rush, kill the Crusto, and get a score down here. So once you unlock Dragon Rush, the game actually becomes much easier, as you will also evolve into your second evolution. Now just clear down, and try to get level 8 before the Dreadnought fight. As you can see, if you have 5 stacks on your basic attack, then pretty much just melt a lot of the wild Pokemon fairly quickly. Now I'm just going to continue to clear and try to get level 8. I should be able to get level 8 very comfortably this game just because I have a huge XP lead on my first gank. Do keep in mind to try to maintain your 5 stacks so you don't lose it while clearing camps. Once you're level 8, you can unlock Earthquake, and Earthquake combined with the Dragon Rush will do immense amount of damage on your every single engage. Alright, level 8 quite comfortably. Unfortunately, it's not possible to get level 10 before the Dreadnought spawn because you just don't have enough time for that. But if you can get level 8 to level 9, that's an excellent. Because once you're able to kill the Dreadnought, then you should get level 10 pretty comfortably. But before then, just Try to be safe and not dive in too deep, unless you see a good opportunity. Here you will see that I'm gonna start the Dreadnought soon, and you will see how much damage I will actually do, even if I'm doing it by myself. So as long as you have 5 stacks on your passive, and your basic attack here, now I have 5 stacks, you can see I'm just melting the Dreadnought. Keep in mind that you do not have any execute, so make sure that you have another teammate there to help you secure it. If it's heavily contested, then it's not that wise to start the Dreadnought because you will not be able to burst it down and the enemy can steal it from you fairly quickly. Although you do immense amount of sustain damage, you do not have any burst damage to secure it. Alright, as you can see, I was level 10, I unlocked my Unite move and instantly dive the enemy. Once you have a lot of score, it's always good to use Unite move to just clean up the enemy so you can have an opportunity to score. Now after you get the first Dread, and you hit level 10, which is a great spot to be in, and the next objective would be to just do the Rotom. Just remember that you will do objective fairly quickly, so always be there for the Dreadnought and Rotom whenever possible. Here you see, I'm gonna walk up with my Mr. Mime, and we find that Ninetales, so we immediately punish her. Here I'm gonna jump on the Crusto, but we decided not to chase here because the Rotom is still alive and killing the Crusto there won't give us too much benefit as opposed to getting the Rotom instead. Here you see, we're just melting it very quickly, the enemy team just does not have any time to even come and contest. Here we actually go really deep for a 2v5, but uh, <laughs> if we had one more member here, maybe the game would have changed, or if I had full heal, then this fight would have been a lot better as well. So do keep in mind that even though Garchomp is very strong and deals a lot of damage, in a 2v5 situation, you just cannot have enough HP and defensive stats to soak up damage from 5 people. My Mr. Mime actually managed to get 2 kills there, so that was pretty good. Now, your goal is to just farm for the next Dreadnought, which will spawn very soon. Once you get 5 stacks, killing the buffs are extremely easy, and try to get 
your buff rotation whenever you can. The buff spawns every minute after you clear it, so you actually don't have too much time in the lane. Here I see my Zera and Blissey are on it, and there's one person top right now. I don't think I would have been able to stop the crust though, but I might have made a mistake of not going up to stop the Garchomp. And since they have two, three people here, I'm like, okay, sure, I'm just gonna fight it, because my team should be able to secure the uh, Dreadnought due to the XP lead that we already have. Unfortunately, I missed the Crusto there with my Dragon Rush, but it's not a big deal because it puts me in a position where I can just walk up and get a 26 score. Yeah, I just use the Dragon Rush to dodge the Greninja Unite move. And I'm pretty much half HP now. I know that my Mr. Mime is going to try to bait them, so I'm just going to send this brush and wait for them to come in. So Garchomp is extremely good if they face check you, and you can get your Dragon Rush down into the Earthquake combo. You would do immediate amount of damage early and pretty much just clean up with your basic attack. Yeah, I'm just gonna pop my Unite move because I do have time to charge it again for the Zapdos, so no reason not to use it to, to save myself. And we force the Greninja off, so we just get another quick score. Rotom did spawn again, so I'm just gonna go there as my next objective. So whenever an objective is up, just try to be there, unless there's a team fight very close to you, then you can just dragon dive in into Earthquake combo. Here I'm just melting the Rotom fairly quickly. Alright, so the next goal is to pretty much farm for the Zapdos, and by farming I mean get your Unite move up so you can have it. Here, as you can see, the enemy Garchomp was level 12, but he almost managed to wipe us. So you can see how strong the enemy or Garchomp is. Even though you're behind in level, you can still win a lot of the skirmishes because your auto attacks are just really crazy. I'm level 14 now, so I'm pretty much critting on my basic attack for about 700 damage, which is quite immense. The Dread now spawned, but we don't have enough time to do it, so it's not a big deal. By the way, once you're level 14, level 15, you can actually solo the Zapdos within about 10 to 12 seconds. Here, I'm gonna showcase why <laughs> the uh, <laughs> Garchomp is so strong in doing objectives. Yeah, I'm just pretty much melting the Zapdos. I did get a little bit of help from my Blissey, but as you can see, it's only been about 10 seconds and we managed to just kill it very quickly. So there you go, that's pretty much how you want to play Garchomp. He's extremely strong in teamfights, and he's extremely strong at soloing objectives, so just pretty much doing objectives in general. At this point, we're just going to get a lot of scores, and the enemy can't really come back. Alright, once you're level 15, then you're pretty much a god, and any tanks that fights you are just pretty much dead. There's not much they can do, like a Snorlax, Slowbro, Wigglytuff, stuff like that, they, they will just die to you and they will never do enough damage to pretty much kill you. Yeah, the enemy Gonchamp is ulting me, but that's okay. And I'm just gonna back and defend and we should just end the game here. And the enemy team cannot catch up because we did get a Zapdos score and many of our teammates and my goal here is just, okay, just defend. Once you get your Zapdos score, just back and just defend. That is the most optimal play. Do not linger around the enemy base because if they ace you, they can actually catch back up in the score if the game is close. So don't make it into a bad habit of just staying in their base and continuously dying. Here it's okay to actually drop the outer goal because if, even if they get that, there's no way they can come back. So it's better to just defend the second tier goal. But you see, I'm gonna go in here and just try to fight them off a bit. I'm level 15 now, and there's really no enemy in the game that can like potentially fight me. Alright, that will be the end of the Guy Chime gameplay. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you learned something, please give the video a thumbs up to help the channel grow. I will make more guys like this to help you guys, so subscribe for the future content. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.